Reconning a speaker with a Sound Speaker Repair Pro Parts Recon Kit is very simple. First, remove the cutout assembly by cutting through the surround with a utility knife. Fold back the cone. Clip the lead wires. Cut through the spider. and remove the cutout assembly. As you can see, this one is blown. It's very important not to get any debris into the voice coil gap. Use strips of masking tape to cover the voice coil gap. Whatever debris gets into the gap must come out of the gap. Remove the gaskets by using a utility knife. Start by cutting underneath the gaskets all the way around. Do the same for the spider. Acetone works well for softening up most adhesives. Use a putty knife to scrape off the softened adhesive. Another trick is to use sandpaper. A Dremel tool can really save a lot of time and effort. Many different attachments. This one happens to be a sandpaper attachment. There are many attachments available for the Dremel tool. Remove the lead wires by heating up the solder. Remove the wire and make sure that the hole is clear of any solder. Remove the masking tape from the voice coil gap. Cut a piece of paper towel into 3 inch by 5 inch strips, then fold the strip in half. Use cardstock or a business card, cut into strips. This will add stiffness to the paper towel while cleaning the voice coil gap. Wrap the paper towel around the cardstock. Moisten the tip with some acetone. Insert into the voice coil gap. Wipe this around inside the voice coil gap a few times. This is very useful for removing any residue. Compressed air out of a can or a compressor is very useful for getting large debris out. Masking tape. Fold around the cardstock sticky side out. This is a very important step. Wipe this on your clothing or the palm of your hand a few times to remove most of the stickiness. Wipe this around in the voice coil gap a few times. It is very important to remove all debris out of the voice coil gap. You can use a small flashlight to look inside the gap. Again, all debris must be removed from the voice coil gap. Unpacking the recone kit. Dust cap. Voice coil centering shim. The voice coil shim must be curled. Curl this like a piece of ribbon. 
This is important. If it's not curled, it will push the voice coil to one side or the other, which may cause the voice coil to rub. Remove the masking tape holding the voice coil to the cardboard packing tube. Remove the recone kit. Be careful not to get the voice coil out of round. Adhesive. Remove the gaskets by cutting through the packing tape that's holding it to the cardboard box. Then remove the masking tape holding the collar around the gaskets. Dry fit your kit. Insert the voice coil centering shim into the voice coil gap. Drop the recone kit down over the voice coil centering shim. Make sure that the lead wires are pointing the same direction as the terminals. Apply a bead of adhesive to the spider mounting surface as well as the surround mounting surface. Let this adhesive sit and tack for five minutes. Reinstall your voice coil centering shim. Slide your recone kit over the voice coil centering shim. Make sure that the lead wires are pointing the same direction as the lead wire terminals. Set the kit into the adhesive. A disassembled clothespin works very well for setting the surround into the adhesive. Use your fingers to set the spider into the adhesive. Apply a bead of adhesive to each of the gaskets. Install the gasket so each end butts up evenly to each other, but does not press up against any of the ribs of the surround. Remove the voice coil centering shim by pulling evenly all the way around until the voice coil shim comes loose. Make sure the dust cap is free of any debris. Set the dust cap in place and make a scribe mark with a pencil on the cone right around the dust cap. Then apply a bead of adhesive right on the pencil line that you just scribed. Make a handle for your dust cap with a piece of masking tape folded sticky side out. Set the dust cap into the bead of adhesive. Apply another bead of adhesive between the cone and the dust cap. Use a weight to hold the dust cap down into the adhesive while it dries. A shot glass seems to work well in this application. Now is a good time to attach the lead wires to the lead wire terminals. Slide the lead wires through the hole in the terminal. You want to create a loop with the lead wires so that the lead wires don't touch each other, but they have enough room for travel when the cone moves up and down. And now the getter clip works great for keeping the lead wire in place and also keeps the solder from wicking up too far onto the lead wire itself. Solder the lead wire in place by heating the terminal and letting the heat of the terminal melt the solder. Clip the excess lead wire. Remove the weight from the dust cap. Remove the masking tape from the dust cap. And you're finished.